Yo, what is good, dev guys? It's your boy Kane. Yes, I'm back with another video. I know it's been a while since I've done like a tutorial style video. This one is more like a little quick tip that I want to show you guys. It does require you to have prior knowledge to like asynchronous loading. So if you do not have that knowledge, I do have like a little short video series on just like getting started with asynchronous loading. I'll leave a card somewhere. Uh, I just want to show you guys a little trick that I figured out to make asynchronous loading even faster and even more efficient. Okay, so most of the time, right, once you know what you want to load, you only want to load that one thing. You don't want to load every single thing to find that one thing. And I'll show you my code here. This is the old code and I'm using the old method. So here, whenever we change a champion, uh, uh, this delegate gets called and it fires here. I know, and this is like, it's taking me, I, I probably wrote this maybe two months ago. It's taken me two months to figure this out. I know I only want to load one thing. It's coming from this tag. So in here, what we're doing is we're getting all the primary asset IDs of this type now. Now just imagine that you have a character skin system with 10 characters and every character has 10 different skins, right? So that's a hundred asset IDs that you will need to load just to get to a point where you cast them to the actual type they are so that you can get data off of that type to compare it against this tag right here, right? When you really think about it, it, it doesn't seem like it's that bad because if you set up the bundles correctly with client only bundles or like bundles where it doesn't load for data only, you could, you can kind of do like staggered async loads. Like you can load with no bundles and then there's this function to to change an async load i think that's only available in c plus though so it's not even available in blueprint so this solution works in both blueprint and c plus um but yeah so yeah remember 10 characters with 10 different skins each that's 100 asset ids that will get loaded into memory and then you would load them as hard pointers so that you can get a pointer to some data on there now this is the problem I only need to get one. I don't need to go through all of these just to find one. So there's this little trick that you could do in your C++ code when it comes to these uh, different uh, items. So my character skin item, this item that I'm looking for is actually uh, uh, this champion data right here. So if I go to this function uh, that runs, this is the function that runs when this function runs right here. So you tell it to get the primary asset D asset ID list based off of this type and it'll look in the, the directories that you tell it inside the asset manager for this type and it'll call this function to return the asset IDs, which is a struct that's basically just a F name and a, um, a asset type. Uh, so it'll return this struct and then put it in here to get loaded. So what I did was overrid this function. And if we have a valid tag, like if we put in a tag into this field here, because you know, you don't, you don't want this to crash whenever you open up the editor, because basically this function runs in the asset registry as well. So the asset registry runs when you open the editor. So you have to make sure that this is valid. This is just a safety, uh, safety net right now. Uh, but yeah, if this champion tag is valid, what I want to do is actually set my asset ID to the item type that this item is. And I want to get the skin tag name, uh, F name. Like I want to get this, uh, F gameplay tags, F name instead of what it would do naturally for the, uh, F name is that it will get the name of the actual asset. You can see here, I have that in here. Uh, basically, if this is if this uh, champion tag is null, it'll use the F name of this data asset. So if I go to a place where I actually have one of these things, um, so technically, if I didn't have that, it would the name of this asset would be champion Aphrodite underscore default. That would be the name that would get sent to this function right here it would send me this name. So yeah, you can see how that could be a problem where you're loading a hundred of something just to filter out for one. So what I did was change this function so that 
I can use this same tag, which is the, the exact same tag that I'm passing through here to uh, basically make this a way to filter before I even know what type of asset this is. So let me show you guys the new code and then I'll show you um, how it is actually processing this. I got to copy it and let's control all copy and then we'll come over here and paste this here. So now this code and I, I duplicated the event because I, I kind of needed something here. But uh, if we go, whoops, here, let me get this uh, event right here and actually plug this into here and plug this into here. Yeah, so now what we're doing instead is we are getting the asset ID, which is just a struct. This doesn't load any data, any objects or anything like that. It just loads the asset type and the asset ID. So no like hard data because you can take a look at my actual uh, asset. It has an actor that gets loaded. Even, even though this is a soft reference, just imagine you had like some hard references on here. I'm being really like careful with my memory footprint, but like most people would use like hard references on here. And whenever this asset is loaded into memory, all of those assets get loaded into memory as well. So this optimization that I'm doing right here is probably unnecessary, but it's also still another optimization on top of what I'm already doing uh, with basically having everything inside of my uh, asset that's not even loaded as a asset that's not loaded. Like basically I have to load this asset and then load these assets separately in a daisy chain. Um, but yeah, so th this will just get that struck for me. And then what I do now is I basically check the the name of the asset id that's coming here and i compare it to the tag name coming from this uh champion tag and if that's equal to each other all i do is set this one variable to load and then we come over here and we load this primary asset instead of doing like a full iteration over all the assets and then casting into champion data and then checking for the name tag just to get the the data that I want from that asset so it's I hope this is making sense if you have any questions man um that, jump in my discord uh, this is something I want to put in the video as well my discord has this forum so I, I wish I could make this like a color so that it's obvious but my discord has this form and if you have a question, I prefer you to ask it in this form. Uh, there's a couple reasons behind that is one, somebody could search for um, this Lyra stuff, like just look for Lyra and you can filter by a uh, tag. So we can do like somebody dealing with Blender and Lyra. I mean, there's not that many people dealing with this stuff, but you got like uh, uh, bugs. You can look for people who have bugs with Lyra and things like that. It just makes it a lot easier to find problems for other people down the road. It, it just saves me time with answering questions. And it also keeps like a history of, uh, of like the answers so that even if I forget, I can go back and like, oh, this is how you do that, you know? So please, if you have any questions regarding what I just showed in this video of about optimizing your asynchronous loading please ask it in the discord forums and not just in the arbitrary um you know what i'm saying like the regular chat channels uh, a lot of people when they join my discord i guess they don't pay attention to this welcome message but it does say to go to the role selections channel which is here and select a role so that you because most of my channels are private you do need a role to see the channel so definitely you know, just, you know, pay pay attention to the to the instructions, guys. I'm trying to make it easy for y'all. You did go ahead, damn, help your boy out. Um, but yeah, man, this is this is probably the way that I will check for most assets that I want to load. Just to, whenever I want to load like a single asset, I'm going to check for it like this instead of loading all the assets of that type and then filtering out after that. So yeah, man, uh, that's pretty much all I got for you guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.